That's right, you've heard the rumors, the talk. Well, we've got it all three of us. Achoo! Sneezing's one of the earliest symptoms. You did know that, eh? Remember Glenn? He was one of you. We found him, looked after him, buried him yesterday. The virus. Touching us, even getting too close. Well, I wouldn't do it if I was you. But you might be feeling lucky today. Do you feel lucky? Do you? So welcome to episode 41 of Conversations on Eagle Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host Lance and joining me on the podcast panel today is Sabine. Hi. And Carlin. Hello. With episode notes done by Matt and myself. So episode 41, the screenplay was done by Nick Doughty. It was directed by Julian McSweeney and the episode synopsis we read out by Sabine. Ray, Amber, Lex, Dal, and KC split into two teams and leave them all to find any clues to a cure for the virus affecting Glenn. While out, Dal makes a startling discovery about Lex, and KC's own wit is put to the test when his team is confronted with members of the Locos. Back at the mall, however, Glenn appears to be recovering slightly. But is it due to a promise made between him and his former love, Sandra? Okay, so let's dive right into a discussion about belief. Because um, as Lex, Bray and Amber discuss where to go to research the virus, Tyson is vocally sceptical of science's ability to find an answer to the mess it created, telling Amber that she's confusing knowledge with wisdom. She later reinforces her stance by telling Jack that science is not the way and that instead they need to look within to find inner purity. And she references Chloe and Patsy's symbolic hug from the previous episode. Um, so yeah, panel, um, what do you make of Tai San's unwavering belief? And does it kind of venture into dangerous territory, like, especially considering obviously the adults were all wiped out? Um, there, there is a place for faith, but do you think it's misplaced at this moment in time? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think Taizan really reminds me of, when I was watching the episode, I was like, oh, she reminds me of like a, a pilgrim. Like, you know, like in today's world, especially in the modern day, day and age, there are like pilgrims out there who don't believe in science. They, they live without electricity because they believe it's a, a simpler, happier living. Mm -hmm. And sure, for some cases, it can be simpler and, and happier, but it also keeps you very ignorant of what's happening uh, with the world. And this episode just <laughs> confirms that I think Taizan out of every single character, is the most ignorant uh, character in the Tribe series. <laughs> I think it's a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have severe issues with people trusting religion or beliefs over science. So, yeah, I, it's, it's a hard one for me, because I get why she's so stuck on her beliefs, but, yeah, in, in my opinion, it's dangerous the way she does it, because there's so much proof that this virus is indeed very dangerous and something should be done about it to prevent everyone dying. And I mean, yeah, that's already proved. Having faith isn't enough. And yeah, I just think it's a very dangerous gamble she's taking. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a gamble. And once again, I think Taizan believes in science only when it fits her narrative, when it, uh, goes heavily into faith and what she's preaching. I mean, yeah, I mean, Tassan is always a conundrum because, like, <laughs> I, I kind of compare it to, like, an anti-vaxxer in a way because, <laughs> like... I, I was trying not to say that. I know, I had to make the comparison. It's like, okay, you, you can... Like, belief is a strong and powerful tool. Like, it can be really great to, like, motivate you and really pull you through some dark times. But at the same time, you... you there's a, a line where you you need to trust science to, uh, and this is one of those times. Basically, it's like, yeah, I, I've got no kind of patience for it in this episode. I'm afraid. Yeah, not at all. I'm fully in agreement with you on that. 
and it just makes me laugh because I think about Techno Tyson later on. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what a hypocrite! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes me wonder if they had her working on in one of those labs that Ram was going on about with the medication he was trying to recreate. Yeah, I love Tyson, but oh my god, so, certain episodes she can be so trash. And she seems to adjust her belief system to whatever suits her at that moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. And whatever her audience is. Yeah. I mean, you know that line she says where she says tells Amber that she's confusing knowledge with wisdom, but then she hoards the knowledge of the like mm-hmm. the, the ingredients for the antidote. It's just I, sorry, it just drives me crazy. <laughs> she's, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's her. <laughs> it, it helps her uh, in her point of trying to convince the others that no, this is all nature's work. Yeah, nature is healing you. Yeah, she's uh, she's basically a psychopath. <laughs> she believes she believes so cold heartedly in her own beliefs that she's willing to lie about it so other people can believe in it. Yeah, I think that's when it goes into the dangerous territory. Yeah, mm-hmm. she she actually made the perfect. She was very well suited to the Guardian mm-hmm. because he likes taking his beliefs and making people believe whatever he wants them to, and he's great at going along with that. Twisting words for their own agenda. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> Only with a cuter face on it. Yeah, I think they uh, they would have made an interesting couple. I mean, you just we brought me yeah, the Guardian. That's the power. That's the how dangerous the power of belief can get. And Ty mm-hmm. Ty Sam, like she she <laughs> she's on that edge there. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> He's just on the side of good, but barely at times. And we've seen her use her beliefs. Um, for an advantage, advantage, if she doesn't want to do something, oh, I'm going to take the kids with me and I'll go meditate with them, because it's better, yeah. <laughs> better for them. I'll just sleep with someone for it, for the good of the tribe, because karma, not just because he wanted to. Yeah, she's so trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, because I would, before the rewatch, I was like, yeah, Tyson's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. I'm rewatching now, and I'm like... Wait, why do I like Tyson again? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm with you on that. But I think as we've grown up, we've started looking at characters in very different ways. Yeah. I mean, in the past, I was all like, oh, that's so adorable. She's helping the kids. She's guiding them through this. And now I'm just like, yeah, you're just trying to get out of doing actual work. So yeah, age make, makes a difference in how we look at certain characters and the things they do. Jack's okay, just because you're jealous. Jealous? Yeah, like I want to be a specky little geek. Just because he's not a thug like you. Jack's got brains, and he uses them to help all of us. Look, I help you all out. And don't you ever forget it. I'd take brain over brawn any day of the week. Remember what happened to the dinosaurs? What have the dinosaurs got to do about it? So yeah, we have science versus belief, um, but we also have brain versus brawn because um on the way to the newspaper offices lex challenges dow over the time he spends with jack dow immediately defends his friend stating that jack is using his brain for the good of them all and he calls out lex as a jealous thug um surprisingly lex t- is quite tolerant of this uh, although he does threaten dow later on when his literacy is discovered and he also makes sure to highlight to dow the power of brawn when the locos pass by um so yeah just a general question panel uh, what do you think about brain versus brawn within tribe world and what would you rather depend on i would absolutely depend on brain versus brawn and uh, yeah i think i mean i get why you need brawn in tribe world because well you need to be able to get away from the locals to survive at all but without a brain you stay stuck in um the way things are which is well a crappy situation for everyone so they need the knowledge and yeah, the brain power to evolve and to get things working again to a level of, well, basic comfort. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I would have been one of those people who ended up joining the Technos, I guess, because, well, people with brains, and look at how strong they got. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I think, honestly, for the, for the world of the tribe, I don't think there's, there's going to be a big advantage of picking brains over bronze because uh great examples is someone like zoot who had only bronze and very little brain (laughs) and he literally 
pretty much took over the entire city, had everyone feared him, and was able to make certain advantages for for himself and his tribe just based on his bronze. And of course, you look at someone like Ram, who had only brains, no bronze whatsoever, and he was able to as, as well take over the city. So I think it's whatever you know you you lean towards because both uh, Ram and 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 Zoot had certain characteristics that were positive for the city, even though their means of going about it was was pretty bad. Zoot was way more than just wrong. Oh yeah, oh yeah, way more, way way more than wrong. But I think just their their leadership skills in terms of their brains and their bronze mm-hmm. showed people that hey. I think we could be some type of society or survive in this world if we organize, which is what they both did, and mm-hmm. tell each other to, hey, let's all work towards one common one common goal. Um, because obviously you don't need just one or the, one or the other uh, to, to do that. So I think they're like great examples. Um, but for me personally, I'll maybe just have like a, a bit of both. Yeah, I think you definitely think you need aspects of both to not just survive but live it's quite interesting that you bring up ram and zoot because yeah you're quite right they're kind of the polar opposites of how they went about it but yeah at the end of the day they did end up using their brain to make sure other people's brawn would conquer everything and things would work out the way they wanted it to or at least in zoot's case at first yeah 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 in a sense but it was i mean it was definitely more brawn because I think at the end of the day, in terms of what makes the city, what divides the city is the sectors. And he was physically like just fighting each tribe and taking yeah. each tribe out to gain the sectors in, in terms of taking over the city. Whereas the Technos, I mean, technically they kidnap people, but... Slave people. Yeah, they, they enslave people, but they weren't necessarily a warrior tribe. Per se. They, they had that some guns. <laughs> well, you see, I always thought that the that the Technos were a powerful tribe because they had technology, but in actuality, they can easily be overrun if people would just decide to just fight back. Yeah, I agree with that. Because mm-hmm. that entire fourth season, there was like, what, 30 of them at most? Someone could have easily knocked out Jay if he didn't have a stun gun on his wrist. Yeah, I don't know why. They did with, uh, what, what, uh, what's his name? His, his brother. Teddy <laughs> <laughs> boy. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, if you're a small tribe surviving, I think you do if you need both. You need the brawn to protect you from other tribes. Um, but you also need to, to you need some people who are smart to, you know, now know how to live, um, how to survive. So, yeah, you need both, really. You need the brains to figure out how to stay alive. Mm-hmm. And then you need, the muscle to ensure that you stay alive long enough. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think I think Ebony's the the best character for that. <laughs> <laughs> he was smart and cunning, and well, she could kick ass. Exactly. And then when I also when I watched this episode, it kind of made me think that uh, with Lex, do we know that he can't read because he's like dyslexic or he just literally just never tried in school and he just just couldn't couldn't read brought up later but i can't remember exactly you guys try to like try to learn to read later yeah i think it is brought up that he is dyslexic i can't remember if it's from alice or what but yeah Ah. he does attempt to read later but he struggles yeah i mean up till then he didn't really feel like he needed to hmm as well, he got by fine without it. I mean, yeah, you could definitely get by in, in that world without reading, but it definitely helps. That would definitely help. Up to a certain certain point, he always had Ryan to do the reading for him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, that's not a chief's job. That's for one of your minions to do, at least in Lex's case. Sticking to this subject, like, what, what, what did you think of knowing that he couldn't read? Lex just throwing the, the newspaper articles away. Um, do you think he should have spoken up sooner? I get why he didn't, but yes, he should have. Because that could have been important information he was just discarding. It was, because it even says that a head of a, dis- of a certain department was fired because of the virus, and he couldn't do that. 
And because he discarded it, Dell never read it either. Hmm. Who knows what was in that article? Yeah, that's true. I'm going to go back and watch that episode and pause it <laughs> on that newspaper and read it just to see what it says. There were a lot of things on the walls and on those newspapers that didn't make any sense. Yeah, I was just about to say, there's quite a few like nonsense text just on the page. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, like, what was it again? Baby eats bread no? <laughs> yes, that, that's the one. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, even if, if the creators didn't really think like, oh, no one's going to read this. But if it's there, it's it's a part of a uh, tribal yeah. lore. <laughs> read everything and make up our own stories about why it says what it says. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the, uh, that's basically like the, the cure. When Tizan burned that, um, the formula, there's, yeah. there's like words on there that talks about different plants that it's used. Mm -hmm. Did we ever figure out what she put in that formula? And does it work now? Mm, I made an educated guess, but... <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a good educated guess, but at the same time, it kind of makes the whole world of the tribe a little bit dumb, because <laughs> everything that I can put, or I can think of to my knowledge, that she put in that formula mm -hmm. to make is like, common common items you can find at the grocery yeah. store <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would have liked just speaking yeah i would have liked like one special <laughs> aspect to the ingredients <laughs> rather than just the common plants <laughs> mixed together yeah. But, yeah yeah casey I, I don't believe it that was amazing yeah that was that was nice work game of poker is tougher than that Okay, let's let's move on to KC because <clears throat> he finally gets a moment to shine in this episode. So Amber Bray and KC um, leave to check out um, the other location, and they are accosted by locos. Things look bleak until KC blags their way out of danger by claiming that the three of them have the virus, and he asks the locos if they really want to stick around. Um, yeah, panel, how important do you think this moment was for KC, um, especially given the unfinished business he had with? and amber and you really think it makes um things right it may not make things right but he did save their asses yeah watching this i, I kind of forgot he saved their lives <laughs> <laughs> and they still treat him like trash <laughs> i mean let's face it if he didn't they would have been toast because the amount of locos versus the three of them there's no way amber and gray could have feeden them all on their own no but they were scattered they had rollerblades in it they could have gone in separate directions or something <laughs> they wouldn't have yeah, I think, yeah i think amber would have got away with her skates gray would have probably helped her and got captured sold as a slave to ebony um yeah yeah i think ebony <laughs> would have took him and then let him go <laughs> yeah i don't know what, what uh, happened to kc oh, okay. yeah but i did i did also see when the when the locos appeared that that's uh luke yes it is. The second hand, yeah, second right hand man from the Chosen. And, and you can see in this because a lot of Chosen were originally Locos. Ebony mm -hmm. confirms that. But you can see in this part that Luke already had that leading role in the Locos, whereas he is the general, uh, basically a general amongst them uh, in the later season. So he was already at that level of command over the group he was with. And he barely has to say anything, he has to nod. And they do as he tells them to. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely interesting. Uh, and it definitely makes a lot more sense because the Locos definitely seemed like they had a huge tribe of people. And then during the course of like the second season and so, I was like, oh, where, where did they go? <laughs> oh, they became chosen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there was just, I mean, there, there must have been an argument between Jaffa and Ebony at some point, causing them to split into groups the people that stayed loyal to Ebony, and everyone that wanted to believe Zoot lived. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, either it's either that, or literally when leaders die, or when they when they go away, I think people just become lost, and they just drift away, like little by little. You see, you see how many people the Chosen have, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, was going to say, I, I think Jaffa left pretty early on after Zoot's death. I yeah. think he took around. I just think that some of them 
realized that they weren't doing well under Ebony's leadership, and, you know, they went to him instead. And sure, it must have taken some of them more time than others. Hmm. I think given the circumstances, because I think right when, when Joffe left and Zoot died, that's when things were getting really bad and people were starting to get sick and whatnot. But I think if, oh, yeah. yeah, but I think if Ebony would have had the time, more time under their leadership of the locos, I think she would have done some positive things. Or not necessarily positive things, but I think the society would have been a little bit more structured because we did see her. And I don't know if it was like that was the first time she had that uh, meeting of all the tribe leaders. Because I don't know if Zoot did that before, but that's a step step in the right direction. Always be people who don't agree with that, who want to keep all the power to their own tribe. Yeah, yeah. People like Jaffa. Yeah, that's true. Yep, there are going to be some fun discussions ahead when we get to the Chosen Era. Yeah, I can't wait for season two. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the season I really watched the most. Did the writers push the are you feeling lucky punk thing a bit too much <laughs> i don't think they did because sure he's like that but we see this in kc later on again i mean he says what he needs to say and what pops into his mind to get out of a sticky situation do you think it was um viable though like from the locos perspective they didn't look ill. They weren't really, they weren't coughing. That was a fake, such a fake cough. Like, come on, Casey, you could do better than that. Like, really? Like, did you... Yeah. But keep in mind, these people are scared. And they've probably not watched people who started to have the new virus as closely as they probably should have. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've seen them. They've seen people got ill. And he has a point. Do you want to risk it? I don't know. I mean, right now, if someone would, in your area would start coughing, you would back away. No matter if it's um, coronavirus or hay fever. Yeah, that's... Yeah, but you, you know when someone's coughing, and you know when someone's fake coughing. Casey was obviously <laughs> oh. fake coughing. That was <laughs> <large> <laughs> cough. <laughs> that was so but, fake. Like. <laughs> but I mean, would you risk it if someone told you, uh, don't come near me <laughs> because I have this, you know? In a time when they see people dying, dying quick quick and horrible deaths, if you get a chance to stay away from that and not risk it, and all you have to do for that is let three people go. See, mm. that's my issue with that, that scene, because they were stoning people with the virus, so they didn't even yeah. have to get close. They, if, they, they, if they could have just stoned them, <laughs> they didn't need to be have physical contact. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, well, yeah, that is true. But I don't know how much the locals, like, you know, uh, communicate with each other. Like, hey, we found a really effective way to get rid of these virus-affected people. <laughs> and keep in mind, um, anyone who knew Ebony already knew that Bray was sort of untouchable. You know, for some odd reason, Bray didn't get smacked in the face during the tribal gathering. Yeah, yeah. Even when he was arguing with her, anybody else would have got a punch thrown at them. And yes, especially um, especially since this must have been the time that Jaffa had already split off, and some of the others we see we also see in flashbacks from the same class that Martin and Trudy were in. So some of them must have known Bray was Zoot's brother. And yeah, I'm probably reading too much into that, but I think they would not try to kill Bray without proper cause. Yeah, I'll buy into that, and then. With the whole KC thing, I think, you know, with that whole discussion of brains versus bronze, I think KC showed some really, some, some brains during that whole, that whole scuffle. Mm -hmm. He's a smart kid. He's a street kid. He knows how to think on his feet. And yeah, I, I can understand why the locos wouldn't risk it. And when we see them stone people, they were act actually actively hunting those people to kill them. Right now, they weren't hunting them to kill. So who knows if they have bags of stones with them to, to throw at them. Okay, I, I'll, I'll go with that headcanon. Because I'll <laughs> go with the headcanon that you, you put. So yeah, they, they knew Bray's connection, so they kind of let them go. I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I still think they could have just like, yeah, just stoned them if they really wanted to. But yeah, that headcanon works. You're local and you touch Bray, Ebony's going to kill you. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll have to go ahead for that. Yeah, and it also seemed like they were surprised to see them. I never see that many locos together. 
like as a no. hunting party. They're definitely doing most something else. Hunting party for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're most likely doing something else. What? You're too good for Lex. I can see how you really feel about him. But you have to promise me. Give me something to get better for. A reason. What reason? Promise you what? If I get better. No, when I get better. You have to promise you'll come with me. Don't tell me you never had any feelings for me. Please, Zandra. All right, Glenn. I promise. Okay, let's move on to Zandra and Glenn. So back at the mall, um, Zandra tells Glenn that she's now married to Lex and she's mostly happy. And Glenn says that despite everything that's happened between them, he still cares for her. And as an incentive for him to get better, he makes her promise to go away with him after he's recovered. Thinking he's dying, Zandra reluctantly agrees, uh, but then she later gets alarmed when he does actually start to feel better. So, I mean, similar question, panel. Like, do you think it was a mistake for Zandra to agree, like Trudy believes? Or was it simply a harmless wish made to a dying man? I think her original intentions were just fulfilling a simple harmless wish from a dying man. Yeah, I agree. But that, that why he was afraid when he started to look better, though, because Sandra is normally not one to go back on her word. Yeah, but it was like a it was a harmless wish, like okay, this will help you motivate you to get better. Yeah, but it wasn't like a um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm pledge my undying love to you kind of thing. Yeah, it was the little reliefs he could give him on his deathbed. Exactly. Like I, I, I didn't quite understand Trudy's mindset here that she should like yeah but didn't Trudy say that after he was already looking better I mean they suddenly thought he would make it and Trudy was like no you have to tell him the truth because the truth is better than lying hmm. I mean that was coming from a girl who had been lied to by Bray that he would always be there for her and all that so I get why Trudy would be upset by Sandra doing that to someone uh, if yeah. there's still a chance he might make it I can see that now yeah okay yeah, but someone should tell Trudy that it doesn't matter if they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was clear as day that Glenn was going to die from this, so Zandra lying at was that, fine. It, it was fine, but at the moment that Sandra was um, suddenly panicking about it and going to Trudy with it, she thought he was suddenly actually doing better. She was afraid that he would live. Yeah, but, you know, Trudy should also try to understand that because of Zandra lying, that was the reason why he felt better. And I also believe that it helped him die peacefully because he was clearly in, in yeah. pain. and whatnot. Yeah. But Oh, I, I fully agree. It helped him die peacefully. I think part of it was just... Trudy not wanting to believe that Glenn was actually going to die because that would be admitting that they were all in danger of dying. Mm. Mm. I mean, if there's a glimmer of hope that people can recover from this, wouldn't you want to believe it? Mm. You know what's really interesting now that I think about it? Because the virus, uh, first it affected adults and then mm -hmm. not teenagers and kids. So now that there's a stronger uh, variant of the virus, now it's affecting teenagers and some kids, right? Some kids. But did, mm -hmm. did it ever affect Brady? Like, just like little babies? Um, as far as we know, no. Hmm. So I wonder if it was like taking like a new form, but it was still like not affecting babies. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know that yet, though. Well, I mean... No, they didn't know that, but I would think someone, someone with a little brain, would kind of just see the uh, uh, see the pattern and what's going on from adults, not teenagers, from teenagers to maybe not kids to now teenagers and kids, but now not babies to see how it's affecting them. Someone probably saw that, but on the other hand, um, these mole rats hadn't been outside in the real world at that point in time. Yeah. The, f the first person they came across with the new mutation of the virus was Glenn. Mm -hmm. They had no clue what was going on until, well, Glenn came in and KC came running back in because they were stoning people. I mean, before that, they had no clue that the virus was back. How Bray missed that on his mysterious rounds of hunting for food, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. but 
from a from a law perspective, it would have been nice to yeah get that kind of information of whether it was like affecting the people on the far end of te- being a teenager to adult. But yeah, we don't get that information. We only, we only know Glenn and random individuals in the streets. So yeah, we don't get that kind of clarification of when it's kind of who is it striking. But yeah, you're right. I I just now thought of a really crazy theory. <laughs> it's like so i think well you will see it on the next episode but when they go to hope island they'll they'll see like skeletons of people there right Mm -hmm. clearly i'm thinking that these are adults that grew so rapidly in age they just you know Mm -hmm. they just became skeleton right so what if the virus is still around, especially in seasons four and five, but it's not affecting anyone but the babies. Because we see Brady grows from like age one to age four <laughs> in a span of weeks. <laughs> That's a <laughs> right. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would make perfect that sense. Possibility. <laughs> it could be a slow yeah. <laughs> Now it's only affecting babies, and they have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why baby Bray seems to grow rapidly. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I still say it was due to something the technos were doing in those camps with those kids. Oh. <laughs> I mean, they captured children, eco tribe children, little ickly Brady. Oh, that's so true. I wonder if, because you know. They had the lab, they needed to test medication, who do you test that on? Yeah, because, you know what, that's so interesting that you say that, because we really, I don't think we were ever told the the reasoning why the Technos kidnapped people. It could honestly just be for the reason to study them, to make sure, you know, why is the virus not there, um, all this stuff. Unless you know, is that the... No, I was gonna say let's not get into the, the why the technos nope. do anything. Nope. They make they made the virus. <laughs> I mean, they made their own virus. We don't know why. Oh well, that's <laughs> Mega being a psychopath. But I'm saying like maybe Ram had that intentions because we saw that kind of. Um, he was a germaphobe. Yeah, he was a germaphobe, and that could have been a reason why. But we saw that in in World War Two with like the the Holocaust and tr- mm-hmm. concentration camps. Towards when when they freed the the Jewish people. A lot of them, they kept them, they still kept them in those camps because they were still studying them. And since a lot of them were like starve deprived, if they just let them eat whatever, they would literally eat themselves to death. So that could have, yeah, it could have been a reason why they, they stole them and put them in, in prison camps to just study them. I don't know, maybe, I, I'm just, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but. <laughs> oh, I've thought way too much into that already. I mean, yeah, this is dumb in here, but yeah, from what we, we what we do know from like the, well, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's very weird the whole techno setup because they had some prisoners testing the VR, they had some prisoners who seemed to be working the mines yeah. for the power supply, and it was just yeah, I, it's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Put everything back in the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll come back to that crazy box later on. He makes me feel okay. Better than okay. It seems you have the same effect on him. So? What? I don't know, maybe. I always thought love was supposed to be, you know, like being hit by lightning. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not. So, um, yeah, back in the mall, there was a rather sweet scene um, as Trudy spots Ryan being really sweet to Brady. And she's so Celine, telling her that the pair have been really good for each other. Um, and it's this scene that makes Celine wonder if she might be falling for Ryan, um, even though she says what she's feeling isn't exactly what she f- felt that like love should be. Um, yeah, Panel, what did you think about Celine's realization here that being in love it could be more than just being struck by lightning? Do you think this was quite a mature um, outlook for her? or? How do you think? Yeah, finally. <laughs> well, I, th- I think it was finally a moment where Celine grew up slightly and realized that there is more to being in love than just, you know, the way he looks and you know how pretty he would look on a postage stamp. It's, yeah, 
I, I think this is a good growing moment for Celine in actually seeing that there's more to love than just good looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely a growing point for Celine. I I believe, or I only wish she would have kind of, you know, think about that the, the <laughs> that decision that she was pondering about Ryan a little bit more. Because I think at the end of the day, she was right. Because she wasn't necessarily that attracted to Ryan or had that kind of love for Ryan. But I think just from the circumstances of them both going through such tra uh, traumatic experiences with Ryan, with uh, Zandra, and him realizing he'll never have her, and then with Celine and her, her, uh, her illness, that they found each other and they kind of grew to always watch over each other and then that kind of i'm guessing they kind of saw that as we should be together since we're always there for each other and we care so much about each other i think for Selene, it was also the moment that she realized oh look there actually is a guy that is good with kids and well she wants kids and he seems to be happier or look happier with a baby in his arms than well bray yeah and i I think that's something she realizes in this moment that, okay, Ryan is actually a great guy and hmm. he would do anything to make me happy. He would have a family with her, you know, and that's what she wants because, I mean, she, she always wanted ba baby Brady, um, or at least to be her mother. And she suddenly sees an optional fu future for herself when she sees Ryan holding uh, Brady. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I love this scene in a way because because yeah love isn't always one thing it isn't always lightning spark straight away and i like mm -hmm. that something grow between two people um but then it annoys me that celine forgets this and mm -hmm. and she continues to chase this lightning spark that she has for bray into like into season two and it oh, just yeah. drives me crazy that she just Oh, sorry. <laughs> Throws it all away. Ryan is worth better. Ah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it drives me crazy. It's mm. like, ah, oh, Celine, you had this mature moment, and then you just, ah. Uh. Go in peace, Glenn. May you cross over safely to be absorbed back into the universal consciousness. What's she saying? It's a sort of blessing. May you break the chain of karma and find deliverance from suffering. Amen. 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 Unfortunately for Glenn, he loses his fight against the virus and the Morats take him outside to have a special burial uh, by fire. Um, your panel, um, what did you make of the fire burial um, and Ty Sam proceeding over it? I'm kind of wondering where did this culture of burning, burning people after after they died in this new world came from because they did that with Zoot. Yeah, I actually think that makes sense that they burned him because even way back in the Middle Ages, if somebody died of a virus so deadly, you mm -hmm. would wanna, you would want to burn the body to cleanse the area and not let the body infect others. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was thinking of that, but again, and, Zoot Zoot didn't have any. Any virus. Yeah, but Zoot was born because the graveyards were full and they wanted to give him a warrior funeral. Yeah. A Viking funeral. Yeah, I remember that wasn't their first thought. They wanted to spare him, but when they yeah. couldn't, it was a spur of the moment thing to yeah, let him have a burial at sea. Symbolic. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah for, for Glenn it makes sense from a um, preventing a larger outbreak point of view. Mm. Cleansing him with fire. Yeah. You, you don't want animals to eat that flesh, that infected flesh of him, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Then it gets into your food supply, eventually. Right, right, yeah, of course. But I wonder, but they definitely did do that for Ned, <laughs> when Ned died. Yeah, but in, in this case, you know, during another outbreak of the virus, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it definitely makes sense now, now that I'm thinking about it. As as well as Tysan's Amen, um, something that really annoyed me about her was that earlier she told Trudy and Celine that the kids need to be told about Glenn's death, but then she takes them away to play a game. 
did anyone else notice that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was annoying. <laughs> so inconsistent. That was so weird. She was like, she had a go at them. That like, no, the kids need to know. And then she goes, oh yeah, let's go play a game, kids. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. You don't play a game of guess who's dead. <laughs> it was so weird. I don't understand it. I don't understand her. I just like this whole episode. Like what I said. <laughs> yeah, that was annoying. And then it's also annoying that the writers keep treating Chloe and Patsy as such little kids. But I, I honestly think they're the same age as uh, Dale and Jack, right? Oh no, they're the same. More the same age as KC. But mm. uh, don't treat uh, KC like that. Yeah, but KC is like he's street smart, and well, Lex deals with KC, so that's not their problem. Nah. KC isn't uh, a sensitive young girl, but no, Jack and Dell are actually closer in age to Trudy and Celine. They just look shorter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think uh, Chloe and Patsy. I think they need to stop babying them and just. Have them just be a part of the tribe. The girls actually pointed th- this out in the beginning of the season when Zoot died. I mean, they simply said, why do we need to go? We've seen dead people before. Yeah, yeah. So many dead bodies, of course. Why is so silly? Why are you protecting them from it? They've seen it before. <laughs> I mean, yes, they needed to be told because, well, Patsy already felt guilty. So, of course, they needed to be told, but... To then take them away to play a game is just, yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. And then didn't Patsy witness someone being stoned to death? Yeah. <laughs> she saw someone being stoned to death. She was the one who brought Glenn in. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh... It needed to be told to them delicately. Like, yes, they've been through a lot, but with the way Patsy responded to everything being her fault someone should have just told this poor kid and not just took her out for a game yeah i think the tribe i think the entire series as a whole would be so different if they just allowed chloe and patsy to be a part of the tribe along with the decision making and like going out for like hunting parties or like searching for 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 stuff I sometimes wonder, because they have less screen time than some of the older kids, I have no clue if that had anything to do with child labor laws for what their age was. I, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. When, I, when I'm on set and there's, there's, like, kid actors, they literally shoot their scenes first, and then exactly when they're done, they mm-hmm. get them in a car, and then they have to go to school, or, like, to the trailer to, to do school yeah. stuff. Yeah, because they were still, like, they weren't in high school age yet, whereas people like Trudy and Dal and Jack, they were. So, yeah, I think the age gap had something to do with that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because a minor minor on set, I believe, at least from here, where where I live, they can only spend six hours on set working. Over here, it's, um, I think there's different rules for uh, babies, toddlers... Yeah, under 12 yeah. year olds and over 12 year olds right yeah, yeah 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 so they would fall exactly in the slightly younger category who had to have less screen time so i think that might have been a reason why they weren't fully included in everything yeah yeah that would make a lot of sense and f- from a like a writer's perspective i think like the older kids were kind of just trying to protect them i think mm-hmm. in a way, yeah kind of protect their what childhood they had left but um yeah, in a lot of ways, it does exclude them from like the big events and decisions. Yeah, if anything, they're hurting. They're hurting uh, Chloe and Patsy even more for not letting them be allowed. Mm. Cause yeah, but I've... I think these. Well, we have to remember in this is that these older teenagers probably never were included in decisions when they were Chloe and Patsy's age either. Mm. Right. So for that, they've grown up knowing that at that age you don't have a say in certain things. And yeah, yeah. that evolves over time, but I think it might just be that one little, one of those little things left over for, from how they grew up themselves. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can buy into that. And maybe the answer's on the island. Maybe. You've answered it. But we don't know what's out there. It's been off limits for years. And there's been some pretty scary stories about the place, like germ warfare and animal experiments. I don't see what choice we have, now that Glenn's dead. 
so that leads us to our final thoughts of the episode. So after pulling all their findings together, the tribe realised that what little they do know all points to one place, and that is Hope Island. Um, yeah, panel, what do you think of the way that Amber, Brain, Lex all began to work together at the end of this episode? Um, as well as all the hints at how creepy Hope Island was going to be. Do you think that it built up quite a good tension for the next episode? Very eager to learn more about this magical place called Hope Island and the dangers it was going to hold for them. I mean, who knows what was going on there? Yeah, absolutely. This is like one of my top five favorite episodes. That's that's about to happen. <laughs> it was it was quite a creepy setup. They were, they were talking about germ warfare, animal experiments. It was a a place for criminals at one point. Like they were setting this up big time. Like did you did you feel the hype? Germ warfare. So they were doing something evil with germs. <laughs> there were animal experiments and criminals being held there. So who's to say they didn't go from animal experiments to experimenting on the criminals, and that's how everything went to crap? There's a possibility. We, d we don't know. <laughs> it's never explored, but they're just hinting at these things. But we want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't wait to watch it again. So I, I think that's, that was a good ending to the episode, to build up that tension, because it keeps me waiting for the next episode to come. Yeah, definitely. When I think this is the first episode that we hear the name um, Pandorax as well. Like, mm. did it did it trigger anything for you or have any meaning? I thought they said, said Pandora, mm. and my brain went to the box. Yeah, that's what, that's where my brain went to. Kind of like maybe it's like some type of euphemism of like Pandora's box, opening Pandora's box towards your opening. Like, if you go to Hope Island you are going to be filled with all this knowledge that will destroy you. Lots of things to think about with Panorax. I mean, it's too... It's very, I wonder if um, Ray did think about that. <laughs> I wonder if it was a connection to like Pandora's box that was opened up onto the world, this virus. I, yeah, it's, uh, there is probably a connection there. <laughs> there has to be. I want him to do another interview so I can ask him all these questions. <laughs> Aren't that many companies called Pandorax in the world? I mean, yeah, yeah it's... It's quite surprising because like, we, we later find out that um, Pandorax is a pharmaceutical company. Um, obviously, it was quite a big, supposed to be a, quite a big company, and it's obviously a small place. Like, did you think it was surprising that n no one seemed to know about it? No, I think it's probably like what they do for like money money laundering. It probably says it's for pharmaceuticals, but in actuality, it did like other other things. So. I think they, they gave all the check marks to where the government can be like, okay, I, I guess you're legit enough, or we kind of know what you're doing, but just don't be caught by the public, mm -hmm. like, in a sense. Yeah, well, but what will we later find out about what Pandorix was working on? I think the government knew, and they were just hoping for the best with these experiments, and they didn't expect it to get, get out of hand like that. Right. Another Another thing, maybe like a little theory, is... Maybe the government knew that there was a virus somewhere out there in the world, and this and it, and it's eventually going to spread across the world. So they started that company to start testing on things and tell them like, "Hey, you have a green light to study on animals, people, whatever. Just don't get caught." I mean, it's strange because yeah, there's so many theories out there. We don't we don't ever get to know the the true kind of source of what's going on all we know is that yeah they're working on the anti-aging formula we don't know why or for who but yeah we do know that, yeah they, the government were heavily involved because obviously the response and yeah. yeah they were deeply involved so i mean they were doing biotech yeah. <laughs> i mean someone should have known that there was more than pharmaceuticals going on there no pharmaceutical building is going to be like, armed with mines right outside the gate <laughs> <laughs> but then on the other hand, was the, were the, could that have been a front? Could all those stories just be to scare people away? Probably. Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there's always three sides to, to a story. But the fact that there were mines there, or just, just <laughs> dangers there, yeah, definitely lets you know that there's definitely something happening. They were yeah, there were experiments going on there. <laughs> you don't mine up a... <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a mine, and before that, there were prisoners. What do you think those prisoners were doing? Slave labor, or well, yeah. not slave labor technically because they're prisoners, but yeah. <laughs> okay, let's ask the question since we we've all kind of read the books and seen the hints of what what's happened in the future. But like, what do you think it was? Do you think it, it was um, 
like a, they were making a retaliation to like another country that was going to war that was making a virus or do you think it, do you, do you don't even think it was an accident what do you think I find that a difficult one because i mean from the knowledge we have about them they were trying to um make something that would extend life and they messed up big time i mean they're, they're doing stuff with biotechnology there's yeah technically there's no real room for error in that but was it a response to something another country did i don't know mm. yeah it's too it's too difficult to say about if it was like what another country's done because this whole series just takes place in one little area and you don't really hear what's what's happening outside but i will i would like to believe that it was definitely an accident and they're trying to i think for the longest time the government was trying to keep it quiet and trying to fix it and then eventually it, it's gotten so big everyone knew about it and i think when they knew about it and people are really panicking maybe that's when the the company started rushing rushing their work and start experimenting on people so yeah, it could be that they were experimenting to find a cure for this virus that they themselves cre- had created. But I'm, yeah, I don't think we can ever be sure if they made this virus by accident or as a weapon. Or, uh, well, there's, just, there's just so much unknown. Like, <laughs> I can believe, maybe, maybe I can believe that it was a weapon because how else would Mega known to make that into a weapon you know maybe he's done some research himself on what really happened and maybe he's got that idea to make that virus into a weapon but keep in mind a lot of the technos or at least part of the technos originated from army brats who were at specific facilities who knew more from their parents than they should have known that's not canon (laughs) We think happened, but we don't know that. That's all we think happened. So, <laughs> no, I, I wish we got from the backstory of the videos, but yeah, we don't know <laughs> exactly. Someone please write it. <laughs> Ray, Harry, AJ. Well, Ram's Ram's dad was a part of the military, right? And then it was probably at the time when, um, well, that doesn't have anything to do with it, but when the series started, like episode one that's when he was like at eagle mountain doing doing things i believe and this is where liz tells us don't talk about the books <laughs> uh, <laughs> our filter has has a day off yeah there's just so many so much unknown i think maybe i'll reach out to to the to the tribe account like on twitter and just be like Y'all need to just have like a, a question, like a whole podcast episode of just questions and answers to see like, what Ray thinks about this stuff. No, I mean, I think this is why Ray is continuing to explore these in the books. Cause I think he's mm-hmm. trying to answer these questions, but um, it would be nice to have gotten them in, in the show itself. But. but we need more books. My shelf isn't full yet. I need more books. You know, I think it possibly would have been on the show if the show wasn't formatted as a a, as like a soap opera where like writing episode after episode after episode, like literally writers writing in the middle of an episode for the next episode. And he would have took the time, you know, and spaced it out like legit seasons. I mean, I can't completely give him that because, I mean, the technos in season four and five, you had plenty of time to have arranged this backstory and explored it more. We could have had a flashback episode on, well, Ram, Danny, whoever. So much they could have done, yeah. Back to the flashbacks to the army, flashbacks to how they got the technology. Like, there was so much that could have been explored with the just having. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they gave us the flashback episodes with Ryan and Lex at the boot camp. They could have done things like that. So much. As to show us where Ram came from or some of the others. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, Danny. I think Danny mm. can do some flashback episodes better than any, more than anyone else. Yeah, but I think with Danny, it was partly on purpose so that Jack and Ellie could look into that. Oh yeah, I mean definitely. Yeah, definitely. But ah oh, man. Oh yeah, I agree. We need more Danny. But... Yeah, just just like the more I think about it, I think especially in terms of like all the secrets the show has. I think Danny could have been the answer to like 
everything. <laughs> because what it like obviously it never it never said did it actually say in that like little um newspaper that they found that where Danny's dad worked for? It just said that he worked on the virus, right? He was the head project leader, yeah. yeah. But we didn't we didn't know what company. It could it could have been uh No, it uh, said Pandora on the paper. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that would have been amazing. Ah, if only we would tie things up together. That would have been amazing if they would have found his like little badge, his little badge card or whatever there, mm-hmm. with his <laughs> face on it, and then her last name, her last name on it. Yeah, I agree. It, it would have been fun to see some tie-ins for everything that we're going to learn in the next season. And I wish we learned more. That's kind of where I'm at. Like even after five series and some books, we still don't know <laughs> half of what's happening. And what's going on? <laughs> A recent pre-try book yeah. about what actually happened. Uh, cool. Um, that brings episode forty-one to a close. Um, thank you very much to the panel, and we'll see you next time for episode forty-two. So until then, bye. 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 <laughs>